chemistry and why these things are important to be checking on your pool. Um, over here, we're gonna take a look at this bottle here I got. This is our AquaCheck Chlorine 4-in-1. This is something we carry in our store. It's one of my favorite testing products we have because I think it's very simple to use. There's not a lot going on. Um, there's only four things to check for and it's just very easy. Inside the bottle, there's gonna be 50 strips. These little test strips are color coded. And what you do is you take your strip and you're gonna dip it down into the water and you're gonna hold it in the water for about five seconds. And then you're gonna take these little squares and match them up with the back of the bottle. Now, if you look at the back of the bottle here, we have starting from the bottom, we have stabilizer, alkalinity, chlorine, and pH. Starting with the stabilizer, Stabilizer is very important on a pool. It helps protect the chlorine that's in the pool from the sun's ultraviolet rays. If you didn't have enough stabilizer in the water, the sun's ultraviolet rays would just eat it all up right away and you wouldn't really have any chlorine. So on a standard chlorine pool, it's good to have it at about 30 to 50. Um, on a salt pool, it's okay to have it a little higher, 60, maybe 80. Um, but once you start getting over 100, that's not good. Um, so that's necessary to drain water from the pool in order to get the number down. Um, so if you find that your number's too high, you can dilute some water from the pool and add in fresh water to try to lower it. Otherwise, to raise it, you would add a stabilizer to the water. Total alkalinity is very important as well. If your alkalinity is too low, um, you can get what's called pH bounce the pH becomes very erratic. Uh, if it's too high, you can get cloudy water. You can also get some scaling on your equipment, um, your heater and other parts of your equipment. So you wanna try to keep your alkalinity in this okay range, which is gonna be between 80 and 120. Um, if your alkalinity is too low, you're gonna add alkalinity increaser. If it's too high, you're gonna add either pH down, which is like a dry form of the chemical, or you can add muriatic acid. Your chlorine, you're gonna want usually between one and three is what I say with the pool. Um, if it gets a little higher, that's okay. Um, but uh, typically between one and three is where you want it to be. Um, if it starts to fall too low on a chlorine pool, you wanna check your chlorine feeder Make sure it's not empty. Uh, make sure that it's the feeder's full of water um, and that it's running properly. Maybe turn the gauge up if it has a gauge that you can turn up and down. If it's a salt pool, you should be able to turn your salt generator up higher um, if it's too low. And people do notice that during like the spring and the fall, they tend to have to turn their generators down because maybe the pool's not being used as much. And in the heat of the summer, they have to turn it up a little higher when it's being used more. Your pH uh, is very important as well. If the pH is too low, typically if it's below 7.2, so it doesn't have to get that low, but if it's if it's below 7.2, the water is going to be too uh, acidic. And that can really affect your liner. That can also affect your heater. There's a part inside the heater called the heat exchanger. Um, that uh, it can really eat away at and that could be expensive. So you wanna try and avoid that. You wanna to try to keep your pH between the 7.2 and 7.8 range. Um, if the heat exchanger, if that happens where the heat exchanger is getting damaged by the low pH, um, you may notice that you're getting copper readings in your water. If you take your water sample into a store, they may tell you you have copper in your water and you might not know why. Um, and that's something that could be coming from because most of your exchangers have copper on them or they're made of copper so that could be putting copper in your water so that's something you want to keep an eye on if you ever, ever notice that you have uh, copper in your readings but yeah you want to keep it between 7.2 and 7.8 like i said if it gets too low that's not going to be good for your equipment your liner if it gets too high then the chlorine is not going to work very efficiently so that's pH, free chlorine, alkalinity, and stabilizer. You just really want to make sure you're checking on those things at least once a week. And I always tell people it's good to maybe bring a sample of water into our store once a month regardless, just so that we can double check it, make sure everything's good. 
um, and also our tester and our store will, will test for a lot more things such as the copper um, that I was mentioning before and iron as well and a few other things that the test strips do not test for. So um, also just make sure that you never get water inside this bottle otherwise that will ruin all the strips and also check your expiration dates. I've seen a lot of people with test strips who are getting false readings um, and then we look at the bottle and the bottle is like two or three years old and that's why they're getting false readings so I always recommend to buy a new bottle just at the beginning of each season so uh, but that's it on that stuff thanks for listening